So hello everybody. Let's welcome Francis Francisco, who came the long way from Madrid to present this talk about different approaches of extending Python. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> mm, hello, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm Francisco Fernandez, I'm from Madrid. Uh, I work as a software engineer in Bcode, it's a startup. We are working in creating a dependency manager for C++. Uh, I also run the C, C++ user group in Madrid and also Neo4j user group there. Um, I'm very glad to be here, thank you for coming. And today I'm gonna talk about extending Python, <laughs> Python the different approaches that we have to, to extend Python. Uh, here's the roadmap. In first place, I will talk about the motivation, why will we have to, to write other, in other languages. Then I'll explain some basic concepts that we have to know to understand how this extension works. Uh, then I'll explain a bit about native extension that C Python give us. Then I'll explain a bit about C types. Then about CFFI, that is an external library. And finally, I'll explain you my, my personal thoughts about the different approaches. Uh, I would like to warn you that there is a huge topic. There is a lot of things to explain. There's a lot of things to study. There is a lot of tiny details. Every system, operating system treats shared libraries in one way or another. So time is what it is. So this talk is intended to be an introduction to, to this topic. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to explain the basic concepts. Probably the examples that I will give you, they will be useless. But uh, I want to explain you the basic concept that if you, you have to, to apply these mechanisms in the future, you will have the tools. So this is my, my intention here. And I also, and I am a new user, so I don't have the chance to test my, my examples in Windows. So I don't know if they work or not. And uh, I use mainly the C Python implementation to, to test all, all my this code. So, okay. Uh, what, what is the motivation? Why should we care about writing C or even other languages like Fortran? Why should we want to, to call these languages from, from Python? We, in C we have to deal with memory, we have to, to treat with some Scan some things like pointers that could be hard to, to treat with. Why should I care about writing in C? Well, I think that there are mainly three reasons. In first place, we, we have the speed. Probably we have some Python program that have a bottleneck in some part. Let's say that it has some part that have a very intensive calculation that takes, takes a lot of time. Probably we want to write this chunk of code into C, so we will improve our, our performance. Other reason could be using legacy code. Let's say that I have a very good writing library in C or C++ or Fortran, and I want to integrate with my new system writing in Python. This is another of the reasons that we, we can uh, use these mechanisms. And finally, integration. Uh, there are other libraries, like for example, I'm seeing a sticker of libgit. Uh, we can integrate libgit uh, using extensions to, to use uh, this library uh, through Python. And another reason could be that this is, in, in the other hand, probably we want to integrate a Python interpreter in an existing uh, program writing in C or C++, but this is out of the scope of this talk, but this could be other use of using uh, Python C API. Okay. I'll, uh, now I'll explain you some, some concepts that we have to know about uh, artifacts in binary libraries. We have in one, way, in one way static libraries and on the other hand we have shared libraries. I'll explain you the difference between these two kind of, of libraries. Okay, a static library is just a, a bunch of object files. As we can see here we have a, a static library and it just two object uh, files, a.o and b.o, as some meta information. And every time that a linker links this library with a binary, uh, whole, this new binary has a copy of this, this object. So it seems that in this scope, in this context, we don't want to, to compile a new Python interpreter with this um, extension. So it seems that the static library doesn't work well with these this, uh, mechanisms. On the other hand, we have shared libraries. Uh, 
cell libraries uh, works in, in other way. Operating systems uh, load a cell library once in memory, and every program that uses that, um, that library uh, uses the same chunk of memory. Uh, every program has its own copy of variables, but they use the same, the same copy in memory. And we can load during dynamically or during runtime this kind of library. So it seems that shared libraries is the, the good way to, to extend Python. OK. Uh, oh, let's start with the three mechanisms. In first place, we have native extensions. Uh, CPython gave us access to the C API. And C API is a Python API that defines a set of functions, macros, and variables that provide us access to most of the aspects that we have to, to access to Python runtime. So we can extend how Python works uh, using C code. OK. Uh, well, let's do a hello world. I thought that making a hello world using native extension couldn't be very, very useful. So I've been thinking hard, hard into a problem. And I want to translate this very, very hard code that do an addition of two numbers <laughs> to, to nat a native extension. Uh, OK. We have a module with a function that takes two arguments, A and B, and returns the, the addition. Very simple. You can imagine another hard fun function here, another static function or something that takes too, too much time. We can translate into C. And a native extension looks like this. Can you, look, can you see it? Well, I'll go into detail in the next slides. But the aspect is, is that we have our function, and then we define our module in C code. OK? So in first place, we include our Python API, our Python header. So we can have access to all, all of the things of the functions, macros, and variables that Python API gave us. Uh, should notice that uh, if we want to use some system includes, we have to include after Python.h, because Python API redefines some, some system stuff. So if we want to, to use Python uh, system includes, we have to include after including Python API. Uh, here we have our, our function. The signature is it returns a pointer to a Py object. A Py object, as you know, is uh, the, the main object of C Python implementation. And then it, it takes two arguments. In first place, by convention, it takes an, a pointer to self. Every function in, in native extensions takes an, a, a pointer to self as first argument, and then a pointer to a tuple of arguments. OK. Then we declare three, three pointers, a, b, and result. Then we get uh, these two, two arguments. As I told you, args is a tuple, so I use this macro defined by Python API, and I get the first argument and then the, the second one. And then I use another function given by Python API to, to add this to, to add A and B. And I get the result, and I return the result. Very simple. Uh, let's notice that this is a toy example. If I pass only one argument, it will probably break, because I don't check if it has two arguments or whatever. Then we define the public method, method that the, my module will have. And this is a list with uh, the name of, of my method, a pointer to my function, uh, some flags, and my doc string. And finally, I define the first method that will be called, first function, sorry, that will be called the first time that I import this module. And it just init my module. It gives, it gives a name, uh, the, my public functions, and a doc stream for this module. Also, Python gave us uh, some, some tools to deal with compilation of my native extension. We have extension class that if we give a, a name and a list of files, it will take care about compiling my code depending on the platform. We don't have to take care about, OK, I have to compile with positive independent code because it has a library. It will take care about, about it. So I compile it, and we can try my fancy module. I import it, and I call my function. OK, it's, it take the addition of my two numbers. But I like to, to go deeper 
and think about how this works at sea level. Okay, so I did a bit of research and I finally ended in this man page. The man page of DL Open. This is a system call defined in Linux and BSD. I don't know if in Windows is available. Uh, and this function, what it what does is given a path and some flags, it mm, loads a shared library into memory and augment the, the number of, of reference for, for this, this shared library. So I grab the PyCC Python code and I ended up in this file. And we can see here that we have an, a call to DL open. Uh, with a path name to my module that I'm loading, in case that it's a, a native extension. And if, if everything is okay, it will store a new reference to, to, my, to my handle. And this is another system called DLSIM that looks for a symbol in my, in my shared library. With this call, he's looking for the first function that is called uh, the first time that a module is imported. Do you remember this function? Okay, it called this function that re registered my module into uh, my dictionary of um, important modules. As far as you know, we have to, to deal with memory in C. We have to, if we allocate some memory, we have to free after, after using it. If we don't need to do it, we'll have memory leaks. But uh, we are lucky. In Python, we have an automatic garbage collector. It uses the reference counting algorithm. So we can have access to, to this algorithm using, using uh, these two macros, pyinc-ref and pydecref. So if we are dealing with Python objects, we, we can use it and it will take care about uh, memory. Uh, it also gave us, gave us uh, a cycle detector because if you know how reference counting works, uh, basically it takes a account of how many external references have a, an object and when this counter comes to zero, uh, it frees the, the object. Basically, it's a very, very basic introduction. But we can have cycles. Uh, it, it means that we can have reference to, to the object itself. So. Python garbage collector have also a cycle detector. Uh, but what happens when we have to deal with errors? In C, we don't have exceptions, as far as you know. So by convention, we have to return null, point, null pointers convention and register my error into a variable that uh, Python interpreter has. Uh, in code, it looks like that. We register our, our exception with some type. In that case, it's a base exception with some message and we return null. Uh, well, also there are differences between all of this code is from Python 2. If we want to work with Python 3, there are a lot of differences between the API, but also there are differences between uh, how can define the modules. In Python 2, as you, as you have seen, we have to call a method with some arguments, and depending on position, it uh, have some semantics. In Python 3, we have to define this struct with a lot of more information. We, have to, we can define more things, but basically we give a name to our module, a doc string, and a reference to our public functions. And we create our module with this structure. This is all about native extension. Uh, okay, now we'll study C types. C type is an advanced foreign function interface for Python. Python. It allows us to create, func to call function from shared libraries and also allows us to create, access and manipulate C types, C data types. Okay, here we have a list from the official documentation and here we have a relation between all the types. But basically what Python does in underlying is uh, Python has a mechanism for something like flags and you translate from these flags to, to C data types. Let's say, for example, an integer is uh, flagged as i, so with some mechanism I translate my pi object to an integer. Basically what is C type does. Uh, then we can define also a structure. We have to inherit from a structure that is defined in C types, and we have to declare the fields of the structure with 
our C types data types. And we can use um, previously defined structure as, as fields. Okay? So I'll give you an example. I have a Fibonacci recursive algorithm implemented in C as a shared library, and I want to map as Python code. So I can call this uh, algorithm using uh, Python. And I will also implement the same algorithm using Python, and I will measure the differences between these two implementations. Okay, here we have our, our algorithm, nothing new to see here. Uh, here is the thing. I, first of all, I import C types, then I load my shell library into memory, and on the line he's opening using DL open, and I have a handle to my, to my library that is storing my variable libfib, and then I define a, a function, C type fib, that takes an argument, okay? And basically what this function does, it is a wrapper that calls my Fibonacci function implemented in C. So I have a reference to my shared library loaded in memory, into memory, libfib, and I call my, my function implemented in C, fib. And as an argument, it takes an integer type of, of C. So I, have, I do the cast to, to an integer. And below, I, we have the Python implementation. So I measure the, the times using ePython. It's not a very, very good benchmark, but uh, we can show the, the differences using the, this implementation with, uh, we have 63.8 microseconds per loop, while when we're using Python implementation, we get 3.62 3 milliseconds. Okay, as well as expected, very simple, see. But uh, as I told you at the beginning, one of the reasons for, for using this kind of mechanism could be uh, using legacy code. So I, I thought, okay, could we use Fortran as an example and we can take some code, randomly get in the, in, to the internet, and try to wrap using, using Python. So I went to GitHub, I went to trending repositories, to Fortran, there are a lot, a lot of Fortran code nowadays, <laughs> it's just a joke, and get this, this Fortran lib that is just a bunch of mathematical stuff. And I want to wrap using C types. Uh, here we have our, our Fortran function that returns a real that is mapped to a float in C, if I'm not wrong, it takes a list of reals and it returns the mean of this list. Nothing. Uh, so I compile it uh, as a library using gfortran and I listed the ABI, the symbols that are public and are exported. I cannot be able to get nicer symbols if someone here knows how to get nicer symbols using gfortran, I'll hurt you. Uh, so we're interested in this symbol. So okay, let's see how does it works. We load our shared library, that is called Live Statistics. It is a shared library, this is compiled with gfortran. Then I get the reference to the function that I want to wrap, that in, in this case is this thing, this long theme. And with C types, I can, I can configure the, the argument types that a function will take. In that case, as I told you, uh, my Fortran function will take a list of, of reals. In, in C will be a list of an array of, of floats. So I'm telling here to see C types. Okay, this function will take a pointer of, of an array. I give the, the dimension of the array in that case, and also I configure the result type of this function, and this function will return a float. Then I, I create an array of two elements of floats, and I pass the, my array to my function, and it returns the, the mean of these two numbers. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so, okay, let's look into C types code. I went to the C types code and I look for DL open again. So here we have our DL open. 
So the mechanism is mostly the same that is followed using native extensions. Uh, we get a reference to our shared library, and we, if everything is okay, we return uh, a reference to, to our shared library. The, the concepts are, are the same, okay? Okay, you, now we will study CFFI. CFFI is also an advanced foreign function interface for, for Python. Uh, in fact, they both C types and CFFI use libffi as as library, but C Python half if is on copy uh, into the distribution because it seems that it's very difficult to install. It's a bit messy, but if we are using CFFI, we have to install manually. Uh, it also allows us to to call to call function from shared libraries. Uh, also, we can create, access, manipulate C data types. But the difference between C types and CFFI is that we can work also in API level and in ABI level. As we can see, it's mostly the same as C types, but the author of CFFI want to, to get less friction when we are working with Python and C. Uh, because if we are working with native extension, we have to learn the whole, not the whole, but a lot of stuff about uh, Python API, and it's a lot of things to learn. If we're working with, with C types, we have to learn the API. For example, we have to learn how to translate our types from Python, how they translate to, to C code. And we have to learn how can we create an structure. If I show you, we have to inherit from a class. It's a bit, we have to learn things, a lot of things. Also, if we want to use Python, we have to learn a, a new language. So they are trying to minimize the things that, that you have to learn to use the, their API. Their, their API is, is a very minimum amount of, of functions. Uh, it's also the recommended way to, to extend PyPy. And okay, I'll show you some, some examples. Uh, here we have an example from, from the documentation of CFFI. Uh, here we, we will get a reference to printf that is in libc. libc. Uh, so we are telling CFFI, okay, I'll use this symbol that is, I'll use the function printf with this signature. I don't have to tell the whole, the whole signature of the function. I could get the compiler to, to infer some, some things. In that case, I only know that printf takes a, a pointer to char with the format of the things that I want to, to print. Then I DL open, I open a shared library by convention when we don't pass any argument to DL open, it opens libc. We create an, an array of char with, with the wall in that case. You can notice the difference between CFFI and C types. Here we are writing mostly directly C code. We only have to, to learn that new, create new, new variables in, in C as C code. And then we have the, in C, in variable C, we have the reference to libc. So we can call printf directly with, with my, my R. Okay? But yeah, it seems it's mostly the same as we have seen with C types. And here comes the, the interesting thing with CFFI, that we can work at API level. Uh, what I mean working at API level? Okay, we can uh, use C code directly written into Python. In that case, it works in, in the next way. Okay, in first place we define uh, the things that we will use. In that case, I am defining the signature of my Fibonacci function. Okay, it will return an integer. Uh, it takes an integer with name n. And then I call the function verify with my C code. Here we have my recursive algorithm writing in, in C. And uh, CFFI will take care about writing this into a C code in C source file, compile it, and load it as a shared library into my code. 
So I don't have to take care as, as I have to do with C types to compile my, my code separately and then open it. Uh, CFFI do, does it automatically for me. And then I call my, my function, my lib.fib with a, a 10. Okay, it's, in some scenarios could be easier than uh, doing it with C types in, in two different phases. Uh, what happens if we pass, for example, a string? We have defined that fib will take an, an integer, okay? So it should break, break. Yeah, we get a type error when, when we, we try to call Fibonacci with a, with a string. We get a type safe in, in safety in that case. Uh, do you remember the example of extract that C types? We have to learn the API. We have to inner it from from a structure that is defined in C types. Uh, it's, it looks like a a class in Python, but we have to define some fields. It's not like our regular classes in Python. It's a bit a mix between two worlds. Okay, in CFFI we can define in that case an extract and also a type, and we can access directly from, from our Python code. We, ha we can write into C, and then we can access as Python code. We don't have to have this, this mix between the two walls. Okay, so here I'm defining a struct with two, two fields, X and Y, that are floats. So then I can create a pointer to this, to this new type. Uh, notice that uh, CFFI, when we are dealing with arrays, uh, a structure, and pointer, it allocates the memory for, for the type that uh, we're creating the pointer and fill with zeros. So in that case, point, point dot x and point dot y will have uh, zero values, okay? And they will assign as Python code or the values, and we can use over the R code without taking care. So if we go deeper into, into our uh, into CFFI code, we will find again our DL open frame. We are using the same mechanism again. We are uh, loading a shared library into memory, and if everything is okay, in that case, I create a new object. This is how can we create uh, Python objects into with using C API, and I'll store it, and I return the my reference to to my shared library. Okay, so as far as uh, we can see, the mechanisms are, are mostly the same. So okay, my conclusions: we have three different ways. Uh, two of them are very very similar. If we want to extend how Python works, or if we want to, we will use a Python API with native extensions. If we want to call external code, it depends on you. Uh, you have to think that C types is distributed with a standard library, so you don't have to have external libraries, external dependencies. CFFI is an external module, but it's more portable because uh, you can use uh, CFFI, for example, with PyPy. So it depends on the context. Uh, we have seen that three of the approaches apply the same principles. They are based on DL open and DL sims, uh, uh, operating system calls. And we, we have differences into portability. We have seen that there are also differences uh, implementing native extensions in Python 2 and 3, so we are a bit tied to some version if we write a native extension. And if we use, uh, for example, CFFI, will, it will be more portable. And in my opinion, native extensions could be harder because we have to learn how Python works internally. It could be great because we, it's nice to learn how things work internally. And we, if we use C-types, we have to know very bit about how things work. 
And if we use uh, CFFI also, we can have extension with, I don't know, 15 lines of code. And that's it. Do you have some questions? There's a microphone over there next to the camera if you have questions. Um, I don't have a question as much as a comment. Uh, in the beginning, you showed how to create those native uh, uh, extensions with the C Python API. Um, when you use the Boost Python project, this becomes a lot easier. I mean, it's like uh, you just write your standard C or C++ code, and um, then you write two lines or like that. So you don't have to, to learn about the internals. Well, but do you have to depend on Boost? That is a huge, huge library, so it depends on your context. Probably if you have to integrate a lot of C++ code, you will have to, to include Boost too, but uh, compiling and integrating Boost will be uh, a bit difficult. Um, it's, it's not too difficult, but of course you, you would also depend on, on Boost, but in the end you also get a shared uh, library and then you just open it in Python. And uh, stuff like data type conversion is automatically handled for you without any other code uh, visible in Python. So this might be a viable option. It could be an option, but I don't have enough time to explore the whole, the whole ecosystem. This is the main mainstream ways, but this could be a way too. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you very much. There will be another talk.